right, tonight the vetting of the president continues as we bring you another edition of The Real Obama. Now, in this installment, we shine the spotlight on an executive order that the White House was hoping that you would never learn about. Now, the president signed the National Defense Resources Preparedness Executive Order late Friday afternoon. And since that time, now the measure has been virtually ignored by the mainstream media. Now, the order essentially gives the president of the United States absolute power over any and all American resources during both times of peace and national crisis. Now, this includes, but is not limited to, food and livestock, water, plants, energy, health resources, transportation, and construction materials, and gives the government the ability to, quote, control the general distribution of any material, including applicable services in the civilian market. Hi, folks, and welcome to another video from A Plain Truth. Uh, we're going to get into some pretty dark subject matter, but it's very relevant and very important that we understand what is going on in the technology world behind the scenes and what their agenda and plans are. I want to start off with this quote just so you can hold that as you as you look through this stuff. Michael Mead is, is our modern uh, current great mythologist and I encourage you to read his work. It's, it's, it's very fulfilling in, in describing these times and that these times are, are very critical and important to us all. And he says, quote, in the end, all we can offer in the world is the life we came here to live and the gifts our souls would have us give. When the end seems near, genuine security can only be found in taking the kind of risks that lead to a greater sense of life and a more encompassing way of being in the world. When the enemy is fear itself, only boldness and imagination can save us. All right, so I'm going to focus on Google, who's at the forefront of all this, but clearly not the, uh, they're the they're puppets, not the puppet master. And uh, first I want to get into how Google was created. And it's interesting to note that in the new name Alphabet, they dropped the Do No Evil tagline. 1999, the CI created its own venture capital firm in, in, in QTEL, uh, known as the Highlands, and they created the Highlands Forum as a private network to guide Google. And it's no uh, coincidence that the Stanford Research Institute, and, which is owned by the Tavistock Institute in England, which is owned by the Vatican Jesuits, um, has their offices right next door to Google down in Silicon Valley. Known as the Highlands Forum, it's a bridge between the Pentagon and the powerful American elites outside the military since the 1990s. Uh, Chuck Hagel newly announced a uh, uh, defense and in, in innovation initiative was really about building Skynet or something like that. You've heard of the Google loons, the balloons they're flying up there. This is the dominate and emerging era of automated robotic warfare. Let's be really clear. This is a warfare against humans using robots, okay? This is where we're heading with all this. Command and control is the term they use for it, okay? So let's get into the automated world which they're planning for us. And here we can see that uh, the Google's future for all is transhuman syntho man. And I'll get into a little more about this touchless torture. Uh, we already know they've installed nanobot robots inside us with smart dust as they plan to make over all cities in smart dust. Um, and you can see here nervous system manipulation by electromagnetic fields from monitors using the smart dust dropped from the sky. This is in the uh, particulate matter that can is nanobots that can get into our systems from deliveries in the sky through uptake through our food systems, our water systems, it's everywhere and we have it all inside of us. Um, and I'll put the, the show links to this Target Humanity, Touchless Torture. It's a three-hour uh, video documentary I made. And I really encourage everybody to take a look at it because it's it's what they're really doing to us and how they've already done it and where, where we need to understand what, what is happening. Um, so this was uh, out a couple years ago, uh, Google's IPO 10 years after what their plans were. And it will be a service that will become the control center of people's lives. Now, did we ask to be controlled? No. They're just entering our lives and saying, we're going to control your lives. We'll have driverless cars. We won't have to bother leaving our homes. Won't that be great? Robots will handle tedious chores and other jobs, freeing up time for people to enjoy lives prolonged by health management tools, aka transhumanism, and disease-fighting breakthroughs engineered by Google. Now, is the disease engineered by Google problem reaction solution? Internet-connected eyewear and watches will supplement the smartphones that ensure Google is a constant companion. Now, just on a quick sidebar, 
They came out a couple years ago with the Google Glass. They had like 1,300 of the Googleites that uh, wore the Google Glasses at the Waldorf Astoria in San Francisco. And then some of the uh, some of the Googleites went out to some bars afterwards with their Google Glasses on, and everybody in the bar told them to, to turn them off and called them glass holes. And that one word ended the entire marketing program that had been in the works for 10 years to get the Google Glass out, and you don't see Google Glass anymore. One other note on the Google Glass, the whole mechanics was located at the temple of the CPU that was entering into the blood, uh, into the brain and changing the frequencies of humans using wearing the Google Glass. All right, spooky, scary, but we're just getting started on this stuff. So this came out just uh, last month or so in a first ever letter from the new Google CEO, Sundar Pachai, says the next wave of computing is all about machine learning. Looking to the future, the next step, big step, will be for the very concept of the device to fade away. We're talking internal control mechanisms, biometrics, um, uh, uh, fingerprints, and selfies, and all that will be our new uh, AI artificial intelligence as we move from mobile first to an AI first artificial intelligence world. Facebook's in on it with their applied machine learning group. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg's with, uh, with Microsoft investing big in chatbots, software that answers questions and performs simple tasks like making a calendar appointment for you. <laughs> yeah, right. So I'm going to include in the um, show notes, the show liners, uh, some of these articles I put together, selling of transhumanism, body hacking being made cool, the agenda in you, transhumanism, and you in the age of transitions, which deals with uh, Ray Kurzweil, who's big on transhumanism, who went to work for Google a few, few years ago. So you can check into that. Um, and here's, here's a list. And Now, this is just from the past couple weeks or so. And you can see how it's just overwhelming the information on the robotic world we're entering to. But first, I wanted to talk about this article by Bill Gross. Bill Gross uh, is one of the most successful. He ran the biggest bond fund in the world. Uh, he's not there anymore, but he's one of the most successful investment uh, uh, managers, money managers uh, ever. And so he's in the know. And this article is from Forbes magazine. Let's see what he had to say. His solution, unless we want to enter into an extended recession, the government needs to start guaranteeing income for everyone. If more and more workers are going to be displaced by robots, then they will need money to live on, will they not? And if that strikes you as a form of socialism, I would suggest we get used to it. He goes on to introduce the idea of a, quote, universal basic income, end quote, which he describes as inevitable saying existing welfare programs like food stamps and the earned income tax credit aren't enough. So we'll be staying at home, we'll getting paid by the government. What are people for, folks? Fiat, Google, plan partnership on self-driving minivans. Again, this is all articles in the past couple of weeks. Google, Chrysler, team up um, on the minivans. The driverless truck is coming and it's going to be automate millions of jobs. Robotic longshoremen. Won't need longshoremen anymore to take the, 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 uh, all our goods off the, off the boats. Robots will soon control the weather. U.S. military tests world's largest unmanned ship. Company seeks to test self-driving delivery in robots in D.C. Um, U.S. Navy now has an unmanned drone warship. The Silicon Valley billionaire wants to give us all robot bodies. Nimble-fingered robot outperforms the best human surgeons. The coming widespread use of drones in agriculture, and it goes on and on. This is just from the past couple of weeks, and then here's a video, which I'm not going to play, on, on Intel uh, with all their 100 lights in the sky drones that is going to be over everywhere and over everyone monitoring, controlling, and making sure that we obey our masters.
Please come journey with me inside the world where technology meets human mind, where body functions are wirelessly controlled and souls are overridden and mapped on three-dimensional workstations, all done from anywhere in the world to anyone in and of this world, where everyone has their own signature IP address, where one's soul can and is being hacked and overridden. Brain mapping is not new. The father of propaganda, Edward Bernays, from the 1920s, was said to invent the business of mass mind control. The wealthy elite and powerful have understood for a very long time now how to brain functions, which led to behavior modification capabilities, which led to DARPA and now beyond. They have known how to make us behave and act through propaganda techniques and technologies for a very long time. In short, they have trained our minds since public schooling began, and now they have the technology to override our brains. The huge difference between nearly 100 years ago when Tesla rediscovered wireless communications and today's modern wireless techno capabilities is that the power elite know a massive amount more about our mind, body, and spirit than we do. Truth be told. Since at least the 1970s, Psychotronic electronic harassment has been used to touchlessly torture anyone at will using decades-old, over-the-horizon technologies, cell towers, harp, and geoengineering of the skies around the world to access all from anywhere at any time wirelessly. Touchless torture methods used are through microfiber-carrying nanobots inhaled by all through the aerosol releases from geoengineering activities overhead since at least 1978. We all have these micro nanofibers inside of us. I just... Our masters! What do these things want, and why are they here? You still don't get it, do you, boy? They have recruited the rich and the powerful. They're running the whole show. Wake up! They're all about you, all around you. Blind on us to the truth! Take a look. They are safe. As long as they are not discovered. I don't know what they are or where they came from, but we gotta stop them. Stay away from me. Put these on. They have us. Look at them. They're everywhere. Uh, we've interfered with the ability to um, compute with numbers. Six, seven, eight. Okay. Ooh, yeah. yes. We've interfered with the ability to uh, to speak. London Bridge, London Bridge, London Bridge is falling down. Uh, you think of something you can do, and we've basically interfered with it with with this machine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So Nine. what's the problem? I don't know. This is torture, and I don't care if they call it no-touch torture, uh, whatever euphemisms the U.S. government and their legal staff have come up with, this is the greatest atrocity and crime against humanity that we have known since Hitler. And they need sample points. And nobody likes to hear they were randomly chosen for a torture. So the world, <laughs> so you're trying to tell me Your that. very consciousness, the thing you call the soul, is information contained in the biological computing machinery of your brain. And if someone can override that, you lose your sense of soul, yeah. your sense of self. Well, it's kind of when one examines the evidence and steps back to take in the entire picture, there can be no doubt that the vast majority of human beings live their lives quite literally in a socially and biologically induced trance. And it is due to this trance-like state of the people that we now find the world in such a degraded state. Therefore, the solution becomes clear. Mankind must awaken. I'm sorry. Wipe the drool. I was in a trance. Yeah, wipe the drool there. You've had a rough year. You've had a year that would test a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Illness in the family. Mm -hmm. A breakup. This spasm of publicity about what happened to me from Mexico to London. It was pretty rough, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it's kind of weird. Ah, weird. Hello. Um, oh my goodness. Hello. Ew, strong Brittany. Um, yeah, it was a weird. In covertly recorded off-air transmissions from the Bush-Clinton presidential election campaign in the 1990s, we can see that Bill Clinton was nothing more than a puppet to the puppet masters which placed him in the White House. Bill Clinton's demeanor seems to be similar to a person who is under a hypnotic trance. You probably heard about the voice of God inside your head. Is it real? Absolutely. You can hear the handlers or mind prison guards inside your skull as clearly as a cell phone call. This is the synthetic tele telepathy that the CIA has been working on for decades. Is this the stuff voices in the head and things like that? Yes. We've run into a few people that claim they got voices in their heads, they sleep inside tinfoil boxes, they do a lot of crazy things, it seems. But when they talk to us, they seem totally normal, they seem totally sane. Are these people crazy, or is the government doing this to them? The, the government's doing this to them. Uh, voices are very easy. Um, and the it isn't people imagining voices, they physically hear them. They physically hear, as I'm talking to you, my voice isn't inside your brain. My voice goes no further than an inch into your ear. No further at all. Uh, it's the electrical signal that makes you interpret how I sound. And once you've got this electrical signal, which can be a chip or a, lots of things, you can physically make people hear voices certain voices and, and it can be it, the, any conversation um and it, it can be anybody you want to hear it can be a soft angel and angelic voice it can be a god uh it could be something that scares you like a devil it, it could be anything and then i'd go down the re road and talk to somebody else and they would continue the conversation because it was that same energy speaking through these people that it had hacked into so it's it's intelligent life that literally can hack into people and it can use them as their puppets while it what it does essentially it puts you or your soul energy in a sort of box inside you where it feeds off of it and it stays in your body and expresses so why we have so many murderers child molesters and things like that out there Nat Lauer and Al Roper. Will someone do the, the junior high hug? Yeah. It's like this. You gotta make it real awkward. That's exactly how you he did it. You have to have a certain amount of distance between yes, the bodies exactly. in junior high. Yes, like they say in Catholic school, leave room for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> anyway, there is a lot of uh, memories today, actually. It's a big day in music history. 35 years ago today, Elvis Presley passed away, the king of rock and roll. And as Mark Cohn says in his great song, Walking in Memphis, there's a pretty little thing. 18 fighter jets are spending about as much as 20 and ready to assist the 600, uh, 100 deployed over the amount needed. Now, it did depend on how the NOLAN remerges RN while the university or the UN mission as whole received support from all patteries in the hues of the, the garbins uh, of today. Excuse me, uh, I'll hand it back to you. Oh, Barack Obama retaking the oath of office, Chief Justice Roberts with reporters present, readministering the, re -administrating, uh, administering the oath, excuse me, getting the words right, unlike me this time, launched a high profile bid to be named Secretary of State, named Secretary to Secretary of State Clinton's old Senate seat. Uh, Candy will continue to work her source. Sor sound better because um, I'm a truth machine. Um, Go ahead. I asked. I, uh, is not an answer. Don't give me baloney. Um, I had a little bit. Just pay attention. Listen to me. You're a big baby. I'm going to go back to you, sir. I want you to tell me about this cousin, Stephanie. What? 
another person or a machine. And so pretty soon the brain will uh, bypass your uh, cerebral cortex and be able to shoot out vocabulary that you have no intention of saying. And it, it's, I hate to say it, but it's pretty common with most TIs. Another 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 Evan well, a very, very heavy, uh, heavy divertation tonight. We had a very Daris, Darison bite. Let's go hit Terrace Chase and look for the bit. They have the pet. Reporting from our Rock County Bureau at the Janesville Gazette. Thanks, Marco. Well, Wisconsin has officially joined 25 other states in a lawsuit against President Obama's health care reform law. Attorney General J.B. Van Hollen says Wisconsin is the latest state, including Iowa, Kansas, Maine, Ohio, and Wyoming, to join Florida's suit. The States claiming the exorcist saw Antisracho and Palais Brinritz by Health Earth. It. Yeah, it's a difficult title. Uh, it's a good, uh, <laughs> a good day to, to die. I... But I suppose it's because you had kind of a good day, and if you would have died, well, so be it. Is that it? That's right. It, that, that, that's, that's, that's a good question. Have a sandwich, and let's go shopping. Yeah. <laughs> Die hard. That, that would have been at your chosen time. Well, it's about, I don't, it makes about as much. Kicks civil war. And in turn, this caused the number of voices to increase and grow progressively hostile and menacing. Helplessly and hopelessly, I began to retreat into this nightmarish inner world in which the voices were destined to become both my persecutors and my only perceived companions. They told me, for example, that if I proved myself worthy of their help, then they could change my life back to how it had been. And a series of increasingly bizarre tasks were set, a kind of labor of hook. Victims of testing are left dysfunctional and rarely are they allowed to work. The strategy is to mimic the dysfunctionality of the mental illnesses and drain the victim's resources so that they cannot find help or shielding. There is no other word for this program other than diabolical. So here's what the guys running the show are planning on spending their money on. And if you look at the commercial IT R&D on the number two line, it's $100 billion a year, a factor of 1 million further improvement in silicon, molecular, quantum, bio, and optical. Then we have a category called Beyond Human AI, whatever that means, automatics, robotics in the large, uh, holodex, ubiquitous multi-physics, hyperspectral sensors, land, sea, air, space, and then the finally micro nanosats, GNC sensors, etc. What? Vitamin authentication. Look, I have one right here. Well, here, I'll let you hold it. Mm. Would you like to hold it? I'll hold it. Okay. <laughs> so, this. You guys see it? This pill has a small chip inside of it with a switch. It also has what amounts to an inside-out potato battery. When you swallow it, the acids in your stomach serve as the electrolyte, That's what they do. and they power it up, and the switch goes on and off. And it creates an 18-bit ECG-like signal in your body, and essentially your entire body becomes your authentication token. Yes, this is true. Okay? Electronic tattoo. So I, I'm wearing one here on my arm. We, do we have here. a camera to get a... This is a, develop, this is a developmental system made by MC10 and it has uh, an antenna and some sensors embedded in it and what we plan to do is work with them to advance a tattoo that could be used for authentication. Now, it, I mean the medical application... Yeah. The medical application... Does Google is, now know everything I do and everywhere I go because... <laughs> Let's face it, Here, we, we just, like you guys, but you're from Google. Just give it. So, so this is basically what you, what's going on in your cells right now. These are different fibers assembling, disassembling your cells. What this is, is this is, a, this is a, a, a molecular machine 
that walks around in your cells right now. It's called a kinase and transports things. So, for example, when things want to move around your cells, they don't just float around randomly. They actually I, I like actively that. moved around with little machines, little robots, nanobots that power your cells. Um, what you see here is actually the, uh, an amazing machine coming out of these little pores, which actually assembles other machines. This is like the factory floor of your cells. It's called a ribosome. It reads your RNA. RNA is Uh, you asked a, a good question, so they can control my emotions. Yes. How do they do that? Well, uh, if you put a person under a functional MRI, which most people know about that technology, you can see the points of the brain that light up and, act, and uh, uh, classify each emotional state. You can tell that person is an alcoholic, or that person is schizophrenic, or that person feels pleasure or pain, happiness, sadness, and etc. throughout all the emotions. Now what people don't know is you can induce that, those sets, that it, it's called a, an emotional signal cluster, onto other human beings. So literally copying what the, another person is feeling and those emotions onto you. So do you want to live forever? How about your parents? Would you want to be able to ask their advice long after they're gone or maybe even spend an afternoon with a deceased spouse? As CBS2 explores, cloning a loved one is no longer the stuff of science fiction because of digital immortality. Bina is obviously not a real woman, but she does have the mind of one. I think there'll probably come a time when robots like being a, uh, will be living amongst us. She's a clone sharing not only the appearance of a very real woman named Bina Rothblatt, but also her exact memories, attitudes, and beliefs. This is one opportunity for us to start thinking about changing the way we look at what it means to be human. It's technology we've so far only seen in movies. Self-awareness, manipulation. Now, if that isn't true reality, what is? But in real life, Bina is one of the first clones to be implanted with a mind file representing an actual person's consciousness. The robot can even see thanks to facial recognition software so she actually knows who she's talking to. As many as 56,000 people have already signed up on the foundation's website to start uploading the contents of their minds with the hopes of being cloned. It's fascinating but I think this has a lot of emotional psychological Ramifications. Neuropsychologist Dr. Sanam Hafez says while the technology is incredible, it has the potential to interfere with the natural progression of human life. The way this world works is someone passes away, you get divorced, you move on. But in the future, the robots will not only be able to make the same facial expressions as the people they're modeled after, they will even sound like them. And if you, like me, are completely creeped out, <laughs> I understand. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I respect the technology. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't know. A little, a little too. <laughs> a little close to home. Right. I'm here almost every day. Same coffee shop, same order. So where are we here? Philadelphia. So this is uh, people walking into a grocery store. These are your average surveillance cameras. These shoppers don't know it, but a computer is scanning their faces and comparing their features to those of known shoplifters. It's called facial recognition, and it's happening at stores across North America. That's probably true in Canada as well. And the problem is, your face is almost always being scanned without your knowledge. I think if Canadians were aware that it is a common practice, it's becoming a common practice, I think there would be some concerns. Many companies are developing customer reward programs that allow shoppers to submit their pictures in exchange for special deals when they walk into the store and their faces are recognized. You can opt in and opt out, but there are no regulations. Imagine a pharmacy uh, tracking your purchases. Every single purchase you make, even the ones you make in cash. Or imagine a stranger pointing uh, a uh, smartphone at you and being able to identify you by name and pull up your online dating profile uh, from across the room without speaking to you. This is what facial recognition can do. And the corresponding loss of privacy is worth it. I think so. Hello, Mr. Yakima. 
Leonardo. Welcome back to the Gap. I tried to overwhelmingly say selfies are more convenient than passwords and more secure. Selfies are just one example of biometrics, technology that measures our physical attributes. Some privacy advocates don't like the idea of sharing that info, but most everyone agrees it's more secure. It's very hard to counterfeit your face or your fingerprint. As companies like Amazon, Google and Apple explore new ways to use biometrics, by next year over one billion people could be using these systems to pay their bills. So in our selfie-obsessed culture, your picture could soon be worth a thousand passwords. Speaking of the, I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that up as far as the, you know, we're going to kill your family, we're going to do this, because in my experiences, you know, the one time that I didn't do what they said, and Guys, please don't laugh about this and don't judge me, but um, they tell me things like, hey, if you don't masturbate, we're going to murder your grandmother. I know, it sounds, I know it sounds crazy, man, you know, and I don't know who the hell would want to see me masturbate. I know, it's just the control. You know? They just want to see, will you yeah, obey? But will listen, you obey? But listen to this. The first time, I, and I promise you guys this, the first time that I didn't do what I was told, I went upstairs, and my grandmother, she's in a wheelchair, she has a pacemaker, she's 82 years old. Uh, within minutes... Because I didn't masturbate, my grandmother was slumped over in a wheelchair. I have to pick her up, put her on the toilet because she feels that she's kind of constipated and she thinks that it's gas. And, you know, I know that they have something called... Um, so it's very old technology in terms of their tactics. Yeah. And I'm sorry I interrupted you. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you explained that because, you know, now people know that I'm, more, that I'm not, you know, crazy about what they were capable of doing. So my grandmother, I pick her up off the toilet, I put her back in a wheelchair. We had to use her life alert. Uh, she actually went to the hospital. And as she's going to the hospital, I had, this per I had the person speaking to me says, I told you, if you didn't masturbate, what I was going to do. So there goes the whole theory of, you know, these are uh, idle threats. You know, now I am totally at the mercy and the control uh, of verbal control. And this isn't being affected on me. You know, there have been times where I've been in the same room as my brother. And I've seen, you know, the person, I've seen, I've heard the person speaking to me says, you know, watch your brother hold his heart. Or watch your brother hold his head. And these people are complaining of headaches, and they're also complaining of, have, of you know, of heart pain. So when I'm told to do something, if my, you know, if I don't do something, my family's going to be hurt. I know that this is real, even if my family doesn't know this is real. So now I'm forced to do whatever I'm told. Humans, for the most part, don't have a clue. They don't want one or need one either. They're happy. They think they have a good bead on things. Well, why, why the big secret? People are smart. They can handle it. The person is smart. People are dumb, panicky, dangerous animals, and you know it. This is a man-made motor, a motor so small that more than 6,000 of them would fit on the head of a pin. Welcome to the world of the nanometer, a unit of measure that is one billionth of a meter. A nanometer. Starts at the back of the brain. We've um, we've switched off my visual cortex, so made me unable to see things. If we move a little bit forward in the brain, we've interfered with people's ability and my ability to see faces. Uh, a little bit further forward, we've uh, interfered with the ability to perform actions. Start moving your finger. <laughs> it's quite odd. It's not your finger. It's anymore. not my finger anymore. <laughs> We know that nanoscale materials can enter inside cells, and we know that that could have consequences for health. And so it's incumbent, it's really required, that we do research to understand what is the nature of the interaction between new engineered artificial nanoscale materials and living systems, not just cells, but whole living beings. The microbots are controlled with this neurotransmitter. think what I want them to do, they do it. The applications for this tech are limitless. Construction. What used to take teams of people working by hand for months or years can now be accomplished by one person. And that's just the beginning.
different fibers assembling, disassembling your cells. What this is, is this? A, this thing? is a, a, a molecular machine that walks around in your cells right now. It's called a kinase and transports things. So, for example, when things want to move around your cells, they don't just float around randomly. They actually I, I like actively that. moved around with little machines, little robots, nanobots that power your cells. Um, what you see here is actually the, uh, an amazing machine coming out of these little pores which actually assembles other machines. This is like the factory floor of your cells. It's called the ribosome. It reads your RNA. See, nanocells are real small. A thousand times smaller than these dust particulates. You inhale it, they go to work replicating, spreading like a virus, multiplying in exponentials. Six months time, I could have a hundred million people converted ditch diggers, porn stars, and presidents. Not one would be the wiser. A hundred million people who buy what I want them to buy and do pretty much damn well anything I figure they ought to do. While people wait for redemption to be delivered to them via an outside source, the destructive machine of modern civilization continues to grind slowly forward towards its inevitable conclusion. Obviously, it is extremely important for mankind to truly grasp the depths of the problems we are facing and to the peril that our collective failure to deal with things has placed us in. And this peril includes not only the human race, but the entire Earth and all life upon it. So what you're telling me, every one of us should be in fear of this because every one of us at some point will be targeted? The technology has advanced that far. That's part of the whole world domination strategy. Control of the population from subconsciously to consciously. Who are the controllers? I mean, is that our president? The Federal Reserve? No. So these are people within our government at a certain level making these decisions and they're not necessarily our president or our elected officials. That's exactly right. And now we've got a motive. Controlling dissenters, controlling the world, controlling you and me. Sleep. 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 Elites, those who can afford to carry out practices such as chemtrails, generally don't eat processed or genetically altered food and it is extremely unlikely that they are subject to the same rigorous vaccination regime as the general public. If mankind is indeed ingesting nanoparticulates without their general knowledge, then how might such machines be controlled or switched on? In answer to this question, one only needs to realize that it is now a long established fact that when anything occurs within the human experience, Ultimately, the information travels around the body electromagnetically. All our five senses, along with any emotional information, is all interpreted by the brain via these electromagnetic signals. Therefore, it is also an established fact that man can be influenced and even controlled via electromagnetism. Metallic salts have made our air conductive. This means that we and everything around us can transmit and propagate energy. The air is no longer neutral. I, um, I've survived a lot of things, you know. Um, people look at me and they would never, never ever realize what I've been through and I don't even want to explain what I've been through, but I can tell you this, that throughout everything that I survived, it's because I remembered love and I would, even there were days where I didn't have anything and I was in the worst situation I was just a little child and I would wake up and I look at the sun every morning and I just have so much heart love and be so happy and smiling person would be like why are you smiling and you, you're not allowed to smile why do you smile and I would explain to them because I, I, I feel love and that is very very important to me all this time I think I have survived because of the fact that my heart is open and I really do care about people and I really 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 see that others the really sad thing people are not working from their heart they're working from their ego or from other things and it messes them up and if everybody would just start opening their hearts and being kind and compassionate and caring it's not no, no religion to do those things it's something normal that we have forgot to do if we do those more often the world would be a much better place for us and our children 
Stanford Scientology and the CIA. This is from a book by Alex Constantine on psychic spying at the Stanford Research Institute or CA mind control. Quote, concrete evidence that electronic mind control was the true object of study at Stanford Research Institute was exposed by the Washington Post in 1977. The Secretary of Navy at the time, Dr. Sam Kozlov, received a routine briefing on various research projects, including SRIs. As the briefer flashed his chart onto the screen and began to speak, Kozlov interrupted, What the hell is that about? Among the glowing words on the projected chart, the section described SRI's work was labeled, quote, ELF and mind control. Now, let's assume that uh, Mr. Dr. Kozlov, the head of the Navy, knew about this program. Um, ELF stands for extremely long frequency electronic magnetic waves from the very slow brain frequencies up to 100 cycles per second. The Navy quietly continued to fork out $100,000 for a two-year project by bionics specialist. The, quote, remote, remote viewing, end quote, team at SRI was really engaged at projecting words and images directly to the cranium. It was not a humanitarian pastime. The project was military, and test subjects are subjected to a lifetime of EM torture, plied with the same thorough disregard for human rights as the radiation tests conducted at the height of the Cold War. To be sure, the treatment of subjects if received at the hands of their own government would be considered atrocities if practiced in, in wartime. Uh, please note they were using this back in 1977. Uh, electronic mind control machines were championed at SRI by Dr. Carl Pribram, Director of Neuropsychology Research Laboratory. I certainly could educate a child by putting an electrode in the lateral hypothalamus and then selecting the situations in which I stimulate it. In this way, I can grossly change his behavior. Psychology Today touted Pimbram as, quote, the Magellan of brain science, end quote. He impaimed his degrees, BS, MD, at the University of Chicago. SRI studied how the brain processes and stores sensory imagery. He is credited with discovering that mental imaging bears a close resemblance to the hologram projection, the basis for transmitting images to the brains of test subjects under the misnomer of remote viewing. The SRI PSI experiments were supervised at Langley, by Virginia, by John McCannon, M M McMahon, second in commander under William Casey, succeeding Bobby Ray Inman. The SAIC director, M McMahon, has, according to Philip Agee, the CIA whistleblowing exile, an affinity for, quote, technological exotics for the CIA covert actions. He was recruited from the agency after his graduation from Holy Cross College, a Jesuit school, and he's a former director of the Technical Ser Services Division, Deputy Director for Operations. And in 1982, McMahon was appointed de Deputy Director of the CIA. He left the agency six years later to take the position of President of Lockheed Missiles and Space Systems Group. In 1994, he moved to the Draper Laboratories. He is the Director of dire Defense Enterprise Fund and an advisor to the correct Congressional con Committees. Many of the SRI impasse were mustered from L. Ron Hebert's Church of Scientology. Harold Putoff, the Institute's senior researcher, is a leading Scientologist. So you get an idea of the characters here we're dealing with, but also how long this mind control uh, hologram has been being implanted into people's brains. To illustrate how easily and simply technology has been able to uh, manipulate the human mind, this is an abstract from a patent that was taken out uh, in the United States back in 2001. Uh, nervous system manipulation by electromagnetic fields from monitors. Psychological effects have been observed in a human subject in response to stimulation of the skin with weak electromagnetic fields that are pulsed with certain frequencies near the half hertz or 2.4 hertz, such as to excite a sensory resonance. Many computer monitors and TV tubes when displaying pulsed images emit pulsed electromagnetic fields of sufficient amplitudes to cause such excitation. It is therefore possible to manipulate the nervous system of a subject by pulsing images displayed on a nearby computer or TV set. On the TV, the imaging pulsing may be embedded in the program material or it may be overlaid by modulating a video stream either as an RF signal or as a video single, signal. The image displayed on a computer monitor may be pulsed effectively by a simple computer program. For certain monitors, pulsed electromagnetic fields capable of exciting sensory resonances in nearby subjects 
may be generated even as the displayed images are pulsed with subliminal intensity. So what this means is through our plasma TVs, and this is why when plasma just came out uh, back in 2001, they're able to use the plasma TVs to change and alter the brainwave frequencies of everyone that is watching a TV or holding the TV or computer monitors, such as what you're looking at this on. It's if, if Once nanoparticle particulates have sufficient control over a host body, they can then be remotely controlled to work as a GPS tracking device to inflict physical pain and disease to influence emotional states, to cause memory lapses, to read brain patterns, and even to remotely influence thoughts. Scientists working at the University of Southern California have created an artificial memory system that allows thoughts, memories, and learned behavior to be transferred from one brain to another. Using nanoparticles and a magnetic field, University of Buffalo scientists have been able to make worms move in any direction they dictated simply by heating clusters of nanoparticles inside them. These fibers contain nano components which construct and install nano implants which the aggregate of, of the cons, constitutes what is commonly known as a biological application programming interface allowing for complete monitoring and control of all body and mind function in a given host, you and everyone on the entire planet or plant. Here is a payload. The zoom is, I think, one two hundredth. Another. These are the deliveries through our blood membranes. These are in all of us, all our children, everyone. And it works in reverse. As creepy as this may sound, it works in reverse as well. Uh, control panel stalkers are able to see any images originating in the target individual's mind, uh, both actual images and fictional images. And by actual images, I mean, like literally, they can see what I see out of my own two eyes. They can see what, I, what I'm looking at out of my own two eyes through this image induction technology. Uh, but they can also see fictional images. So any 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 thoughts of images that are in my mind. So if I'm if I'm thinking about something in my memory, something that happened several years ago, and I have an image of that in my mind, then they can actually see that too. Or if I'm imagining something, there's an image that I'm imagining in my mind, they can actually see that too. And I know that sounds very science fiction, very crazy, but again, look at Dr. Robert Duncan's book, you'll see that it's not. This may be the most amazing picture you'll ever see in your life. This is a phase two subject with a nano camera in the left eye, only viewable with the proper wavelength of black light. Everyone on the planet has a basic set of nano implants that allows them to be tracked and mind controlled on demand. People who contract what I call phase two will have additional implants that allows them to be body controlled as well as whole host of other functions. Your body is turned into a robot against your knowledge and against your will. The aggregate of these nano implants constitutes what is commonly known as biological application programming interface. This camera is too small and can't be seen, but it can be felt. Some more thoughts and information on the ocular nano implants are available. So we have highly transparent nanoparticles they have a refraction that is four times higher than the one of the diamonds that um, if you look it up on Wikipedia you can read there that they are valid for uh, scalar applications that they can be used in um, um, applications utilizing time reverse uh, field structures. It is a set of physics that is not in the public domain. It's scalar physics. And then something very interesting happens. Uh, they tr these these uh, um, 
protein prion things try to rebuild the nervous system. It is a self-healing process of the body. But if you don't have copper, you cannot rebuild the nervous system. So the, co the body is taking the next heavy metals it can access, and this is barium and strontium. So it starts building a nervous system that is based on protein, prion, barium. And this is um, kind of an antenna for electric man electromagnetic fields. So you, you are rebuilding a nervous system that is sensitive on electromagnetic fields. And not only that the nerve itself becomes sensitive, also, the barium strontium titanate nanocrystals, they display barium and strontium on their surface from the crystalline structure, and the new built nerves kind of grow onto the crystal. So what you get is a new connecting point for the nervous system that is piezoelectric. And whenever this is receiving a signal, it's fi firing electrons. So you have a direct access to the nervous system of the human being. This is one nanobot that you can find in the literature which is not about military technology, but already about controlling the uh, civil population of countries by accessing their nervous system to introduce signals. But what I'm concerned about mainly is the medical effect, and that's because of the very strong connection between aluminum passing through this pathway into the brain is so strongly connected with Alzheimer's disease. Uh, and other diseases of memory. Uh, if you're aerosolizing this and spraying literally tons of it over the world, uh, and people are constantly breathing that uh, aerosolized, nano-sized aluminum, which will easily penetrate filters in your uh, air conditioning system, enter your home. So you're breathing it 24 hours a day, producing high levels of aluminum uh, in this part of the brain, and uh, the consequences could be absolutely devastating. Could cause a huge increase in uh, Alzheimer's disease and uh, inflammatory neurological disorders. I watched a uh, YouTube, which was a geoengineering conference that the government had uh, put on. And in the conference, uh, one of the questions somebody in the audience asked, well, what is the medical effect of spraying aluminum in the atmosphere? And the speaker said, well, uh, we don't really know, uh, but we're in the process of researching that. Well, of course, that was an absolute lie. We do know what it does. Right. But uh, the... The most sinister plan, nanobots are being sprayed on humans for mass mind control. One of the most sinister and difficult to fathom conspiracy theories I've ever come across posits that nanobots are being sprayed on us all to install bio APIs, biometric application programming interfaces, which basically allow for the mental and emotional remote control of humanity. And this fungus is, first, if you want to look at it, it's airborne. It's not a single fiber here and there. Um, it is glowing under UV light. So if you take a UV lamp at night, um, you can see those fibers airborne. And there are billions of them. Not every night, but every now and then. You can see them fly around. And these fibers, these fungus, is infecting the human body. And with 95% or 99% of the people, nothing special happens. They're just embedded somewhere. And uh, your, your biology is keeping the, the fungus population low in your body. They just function as a plasmonic antenna to send out a signal but you don't get sick from it, you don't get ill. No visible symptoms. So we, we would guess 100% of the population in Europe is infected. So you can see them when the skin is opening, you can see them under the microscope if you make a blood analysis. You can see that the blood is infected. And you can let them grow 
artificially in a petros, petri dish, uh, dish. And if you look at them, you see they're a little bit more complex than a simple um, um, fungus. They have kind, kind of organs inside. They have little red stem cells of an unknown species that are self-replicating as well. Um, and apparently they produce other structure. This looks like um, a sporing body. It's like, like the unit where the, the, um, uh, the mycelium at a certain point is forming a mushroom, a fruiting body. And then from the fruiting body, you would expect the spores for the next generation, if this is a mushroom, if this is a fungus. So this seems to be the, the containment for the spores, because if you put this into the Petri dish, you can see the next generation growing. So the targeted individuals aren't crazy after all. Okay, doctor, to deliver this, how do they get into your head? I've heard of these Gwen Towers. They allegedly were used before, and now they claim that they're not used for anything. They do match up with the properties and necessary capabilities. They easily could be broadcasting across the country messages to people and causing them extreme pain. It's uh, um, You can see, if, if you look into the military domain, they use it for uh, radar range enhancement, for turning the sky into uh, um, len optical lenses and optical mirror setup. We call it uh, horizontal drift plasma antennas and columnar focal lenses so that they can play with electromagnetic signals and radar signals uh, by, by turning the entire air, the, the particulate plasma they bring out into a controllable technical unit to direct and redirect all, all, all sorts of signals. This is part of the rocket shield in the military domain. Uh, you know, HARP was built in 1991. Mm -hmm. It's a phase array. It has a lot of the capabilities. There are at least 20 of these phase arrays around the world. And the first person that I could track back, assuming it was a real TI, mm -hmm. was 1962. And that person wrote a book, and uh, you know there there weren't many TIs back then, but it it sounded like a real TI. We didn't have satellites back then. Really? Yeah. So, so you're saying? So I'm saying it's an integrated, multimodal system, and the satellites may be a backup wow. for the ground-based uh, systems. These a lot of these uh, ground-based systems, uh, they're called over-the-horizon radar, and it means anything above anything below the ionospheric level mm -hmm. which is you know out there it's yeah. uh, uh it will the signal will bounce off and so it allows you to look over the earth to the other side and we use this to look for nuclear weapons being launched from russia and china and, and such um, but it allows you to look over the other side of the, the world and it's like a mirror so yes it could get you anywhere Electronic spin resonance. This is the secret sauce that conspiracy kills to keep secret. Notice that there are no ESR machines in hospitals. Why? Because it would become immediately obvious how easy it is to read body electricity from radar. These are brain waves at a distance. The basic concept is simple and very analogous to the way magnetic resonance imaging works, or MRIs. It works on manipulating spin and gyro frequency of electrons. Now this goes on to say right here that the arrow intersection points is pure noise to everyone else except the targeted individual who hear, hear syllables of the waves through the pulsings of the uh, gigahertz pulses through the wall radars. This is from an article from Dane Wigginton at geoengineeringwatch.org, one of the foremost experts on climate engineering, weather modification, geoengineering, 
Um, quote, in one form or another, climate engineering, also known as geoengineering or solar radiation management, can be connected to the vast majority of unfolding environmental catastrophes and the endless list of now epidemic human diseases around the world. There is a mountain of data to prove the global climate engineering assault has been going on for over six decades. A recently posed 750 page congressional report from 1978 outline the ongoing global climate engineering insanity as of that date and confirm the programs had already been going on for 30 years, 30 years before the report of 1978. Back to the article, a quote, our government is doing their best to be sure the public does not wake up to the toxic atmospheric spraying. Gag orders have just been placed on all National Weather Service employees and all National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration personnel. Not only has the entire climate system been derailed, the entire planet has now been irreparably contaminated with highly toxic heavy metals that are consistently sprayed in the skies as a part of what is termed solar radiation management. The most prevalent of these heavy metals are aluminum and barium. So this coincides exactly with what Dr. Robert Duncan just said of his first uh, known targeted individuals from 1976. We know they've been spraying the skies with aluminum and barium and climate modification uh, since around that time as well. People say the government is up there in airplanes spraying all kinds of chemicals to change or manipulate the weather, leaving what you see there, and they call that a chemtrail. This is of interest not just in this country, but uh, European countries and frankly all over the world. A lot of folks interested in it. We take geoengineering to mean deliberate, large-scale intervention in the Earth's system. The little picture is from a nanofabrication study, which shows you can make very high quality and do this in just a jet in a very simple way. Aerosol geoengineering looks like it is so cheap that the cost is basically not going to be an issue. Because nanoparticulates are potentially self-replicating, the cost of producing them is actually quite negligible. As for the question as to why the perpetrators would be spraying themselves, well that answer is in fact a very simple one. These people want transhumanism. In fact, when one truly considers the transhumanist agenda and it begins to sink in that chemtrails seem to consist of nanoparticulates or smart dust, then the last piece of the puzzle falls snugly into place. And it is far from inconceivable that were the global population to be infused with programmable nanoparticulates, then when these tiny machines are switched on, they will simply do what they are programmed to do. And that what this may be may also be largely due to what other genetic codes have first been introduced into the host. 
and the other, just to function in a technical environment. And then an accident happened. The accident was that this program they that they introduced into the subconsciousness took over control. And this is what is happening with transhumanism. This is exactly the trap that is, we are inspired by them to enter the same trap. And we are not inspired by the, by the demons, we are inspired by the AI that has nothing else than a running program to invade planets and to assimilate the biology for only one purpose, to suck out life force to survive. Them are aware of this and they're aware of this substance and that the government is using it to try to make also ro synthetic synthetic things that that's where the whole you have the whole um, transhumanism where they're trying to make robots that act just like us and it's also pushing this energy into the earth itself they're pushing this energy into the earth itself also and into the water that's the pollution of the water everybody knows that the human body is made mostly up of water well it's programmable water's programmable um, the thing is is if you mess with the water and pollute the water and then the people drink that or it rains down or they swim in it or they get in it obviously it has an effect on them and lots of different effects on them so they're all they're what they try they're trying to do is they're trying to pretty much pollute everybody in the world to the, where they don't know what's going on anymore even the few awakened one and they absorb they need that they need to absorb these negative emotions out of the children and then I remember that I could hear them speaking and they were going to take this energy and they were going to put it on food in food. They were going to throw this dark energy on food. So whoever eats the food would also be, they would be charmed and they would be energetically, parasitically linked and they would be depressed and all sorts of, this energy works on the negative emotions. It absorbs it. It likes it. I, um, I've survived a lot of things, you know. Um, People look at me and they would never, never, ever realize what I've been through. And I don't even want to explain what I've been through. But I can tell you this, that throughout everything that I survived, it's because I remembered love. And I would, even there were days where I didn't have anything and I was in the worst situation I was just a little child. And I would wake up and I'd look at the sun every morning and I just have so much heart love and be so happy and smiling person would be like why are you smiling and you, you're not allowed to smile why do you smile and I would explain to them because I, I I feel love and that is very very important to me all this time I think I have survived because of the fact that my heart is open and I really do care about people and I really 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 see that others the really sad thing people aren't working from their heart they're working from their ego or from other things and it messes them up and if everybody would just start opening their hearts and being kind and compassionate and caring it's not no, no religion to do those things it's something normal that we have forgot to do if we do those more often the world would be a much better place for us and our children it's not about replacing people it will never work we need to replace the game and if we all understand the game, we can just say, hey, stupid game, let's let go of it. And we can stop playing the, these uh, um, uh, things that basically is nothing else than, than being afraid of self-responsibility. And I think we are at the point in history where every single individual should master that to regain self-responsibility, and then we will, we will not need a government. It's not about changing the government. Because the entire concept of governments, having governments, having somebody to control, is demonic. We enter a world of, of abund abundance. And this can only work if also the psychology of the scarcity is leaving. If we let go of this and start to trust the other cycle of I know that there's enough of everybody this is why I let go everything I don't need in this moment and share it with other people and they gain trust in the thought that there really is enough for everybody and this is also self-strengthening and at the moment we are kind of diving through the hole of the needle uh, leaving one system entering the other one it's a process that is going to take place during the next 
three to five years. And when we are through, nothing is going to be the same on this planet. The ones who survive this are the ones who collect the spirit and swim in front of the wave. So in closing here, uh, I hope you get a very good idea that the technology uh, is 25, 50 years ahead of us of what we're being seen and shown. They're showing us as going to be an external device where clearly you can see from here, it's a internal manipulation of our brain, literally stealing our souls and brain mapping them. The Obama administration uh, last year authorized $4.5 billion for brain mapping, but that is just the tip of the iceberg. For years and years and decades and decades, they have been studying between the ears and behind the eyes of how we operate. We are not that complicated in our emotions. There's said to be only 85 emotions. They know how we react. The marketing companies of Wall Street, you never, ever, ever hear about. And that's because they're involved in brain manipulation. They know us better than they know ourselves. And now they're inside our bodies. They're changing and we're becoming synthetic beings. Our children are going to be owned by these computers, by these, these maleficent uh, scumbags, sociopaths, psychopaths who are terraforming the earth and changing the world into more of the technology in a binary way that's more suitable to a computer than it is to human life. It's time that we all wake up and wake up fast. Stopping geoengineering, taking down NASA, waking up your neighbors, speaking out, being heard. There is not much time left, folks. We need a sense of urgency. We need to all wake the heck up now and wake up our brothers and sisters. This is a war. This is a war on our minds, and they're already way ahead of us. I hope this helps clarify what's going on. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace out. You've got to be taught to hate and fear. You've got to be taught from year to year. It's got to be drummed in your dear little ear. You've got to be carefully taught. You've got to be taught to be afraid of people whose eyes are oddly made and people whose skin is a different shade. You've got to be carefully taught. You've got to be taught before it's too late, before you are six or seven or eight to hate all the people your relatives hate you've got to be carefully taught